Look on the mask with my boy. So earlier in the month when the PS5s went on pre-order disastrously, we also got the ability to pre-order Miles Morales for the PlayStation 5, and subsequently you also got the ability to pre-order the PS4 copy that's going to come with the free PS5 upgrade. However, there's a different version out there that is a little bit more costly, it teeters on that $69.99 price point, nice. This version is called the Deluxe Edition, and the Deluxe Edition is ultimately still the same game as far as the Miles Morales part is concerned, but this one comes with the PS5 remaster of the original Insomniac Games Marvel Spider-Man from 2018. A game that is actually very near and dear in my heart because it ultimately won Game of the Year for me personally. It was my favorite game of that year. Of course, I'm a little biased, but it did everything that I wanted a Spider-Man game to do right. And it nailed it in tremendous spades. So you can tell that I'm going to be a really a, a bit flustered in this video reacting to the recent news. Because today, Insomniac finally gave us further details of that remaster that's coming to the PlayStation 5 through the Deluxe Edition of Miles Morales exclusively. They made it clear that there's not going to be a physical or single edition of this remaster of the game. It's only going to come in the uh, Deluxe Edition. So that's kind of their way of saying that, hey, we did this as a digital thing. We're not really going to mass produce it. We're going to put all of our eggs in the foreseeable uh, proper sequel to the Spider-Man uh, legacy and continue from that point forward. And I can kind of respect that. What I am having trouble wrapping my brain around is the news that not only did we get exclusive look at some gameplay of that PS5 remaster for Spider-Man that featured ray tracing, dynamic lighting, shaders, and stuff like that, running at a very web silky smooth 60 frames per second in 4K resolution. And trust me, the gameplay itself, from the swinging to the dynamic lighting, bouncing off the buildings and the windows and bouncing off of Spidey's suit, including some of those screenshots they released afterward with the Amazing Spider-Man uh, costume, looked beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I just can't fathom why it is that they needed to practically recast our Peter Parker that we spent the entirety of the original game and the DLC with. So here we have IGN saying the original story as part of the Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition Insomniac will pack in a code for a PS5 remaster of the 2018 Marvel Spider-Man game. Today, the developers shared what players can expect from a next generation remaster of Spider-Man including new visuals, features, and even a new face for Peter Parker. They say it so, uh, so you know, aesthetically. In a new PlayStation blog post, Insomniac revealed that the next-gen PS4 remaster for Spider-Man will look better than ever to technology like ray tracing. The environments will be more detailed, and Spider-Man will even have ray trace reflections and ambient shadows. Insomniac says character models will also get a boost with higher fidelity skin, eye, and teeth shaders, but only... One really, really big change coming to the PS5 remaster is that Insomnia recast the facial capture model for Peter Parker. Quote, we loved working with John Bubniak on the original game. However, to get a better match to Peter Parker slash Spider-Man actor Yuri Lowenthal's facial capture, we have cast Ben Jordan to be the face model for Peter Parker on the PS5 console. And Simon Yassex says in its blog post. There's a little blurb here in this uh, article, but I'm going to skip ahead before I go back to that because I have some things to say about that. Other features confirmed for Spider-Man Remaster are a new performance mode that targets 60 frames per second on PS5, near instant loading with the option to turn on the funny fast travel animations if desired, special 3D audio, and haptic feedback on the DualSense controller. The new photo mode of Miles Morales will also be available in Spider-Man Remastered. Finally, Insomniac revealed a new Spidey suit, and it's, one, and it's the one Andrew Garfield wore in the Amazing Spider-Man field series, which means we have come full circle to featuring virtually every single cinematic version of the costume, which, in my opinion, pleases my OCD. But let's address the giant elephant in the room, and that is, of course, through the means of this cinematic that is also... A little bit on the spoilery side, so if you have not played Spider-Man on PS4 back in 2018, you know, spoiler warning here. But we get Hello? the cinematic Parker. of when Peter is first introduced <laughs> to in time uh, Doc to Ock's celebrate. tentacles. And we get this little cinematic celebrate. playing out in the original game, only this time with, like I said, the wait, shaders wait. and the race tracing kind of uh, bouncing arms? off of the character models. But one can really not pay attention to any of the hard work put into that graphical fidelity, fidelity without addressing the change in Peter's look. That is completely different than how he looked like originally. And it's one thing to bring about a character remodel such as this 
when uh, when the game is still in its development no and the game is still being worked on prior to its release. Amazing. I think back to the and occasion where we had uh, Cole McGrath have hair and have like a different vo tested. vocal yeah, voice. So uh, vocal voice it works beautifully. Uh, leading up to the Infamous 2's release and then right before that due to uh, fan feedback they decided to change it back to his original kind of gruff voice and look from the first Infamous game. Here, however, it's it really does feel like a little bit of a bait and switch, and I'm trying to understand where they're coming from as far as their reasoning for this change. Insomnia creative director Brian Intihar, Intihar, I think that's what you say his last name, has issued a statement regarding the decision to recast the face model for Peter Parker in Marvel Spider-Man Remastered. In Hitar uh, shared how the decision to recast the model for Peter, Peter Parker's face in the upcoming PS5 remaster was not a decision the studio made lightly. However, in, in it, whatever, says that finding a better facial match for Yuri Lonto was a necessity. And here's his statement as he posted on Twitter. First of all, dude, uh, you know, phones, computers, you know, they can, you can screen grab. I don't know why you took a photo of the screen. But today's news about the new Peter Parker face model has surprised some of you, and we at Insomnia totally understand your reaction. Heck, it even took me a while to get used to Peter's new look. But as we discussed, the franchise future and moving to the PS5, it quickly became apparent that delivering even more believable looking characters made finding a better facial match for actor Yuri Lowenthal, who we all love as Peter a necessity. We care as much about this character as your attachment to him, so please... No, we didn't make this decision change lightly. As we did throughout the development of Marvel's Spider-Man, we'll continue to read your comments, listen, and always be looking for ways to improve every facet of the game. At the same time, I hope you can trust us that the decision is what we feel is best for the future of the franchise and our upcoming goals for this beloved Marvel character. Here's where the disconnect, as far as this complete retooling of his face, is concerned, and why you know, whatever reasoning you come up with, there's no real easy way to get used to a change like this because it's one thing for it to happen in a movie or hell, even a TV show because a TV show has episodes and often when the main character is recast, they often don't really, because of the sprawling storylines, they often don't really recast as much as they just reshift the show in a different direction with a new actor. Case in point, House of Cards, when they had to fire Kevin Spacey, season six then focused on his wife. Claire, the, the, the wife uh, character played by Robin Wright. And then, of course, on the sm uh, smaller spectrum as far as supporting roles, you, of course, have the classic case of Aunt Viv come being played by a different actress in, like, the later seasons of Fresh Pets of Bel Air. And what's great is uh, what worked really in that show's favor is that it was a comedy and they were actually able to poke fun of it inside of the show. And then when it comes to movies, this happens all the time, especially with some big budget franchises like Batman and James Bond. But with this, it's a video game, a game that requires an awful lot of time and investment, a game that I platinum and spend an, a, 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 an estimate of about 40 hours into it. 40 hours with this face. And you expect me to, to uh, now accept this face as my new Peter Parker just out of the blue? Now, in the article... Going back to IGN over here, somewhere in here it says that jo Ben Jordan, who they cast, is actually 26 in real life. Which means that this will make him the exact age that your Lowenthal's uh, version of Peter Parker would be and would stay uh, concurrent. But here's where the problem arises. It doesn't matter if his actual age is 26. He has to look 26. Okay. He does not look 26. He looks 15 or 16. And that's where that huge disconnect happens. That's why it was so easy to believe this version of Peter being on the job for about six or so years, as he mentioned throughout the game. This does not look like a 26th Peter Parker. This looks, and this is where my conspiracy kicks in, you guessed it, he looks like Tom Holland. And that's where the a lot, a lot of theories are starting to arise, especially from virtually every single person over on Twitter saying that, yes, he looks pretty much like, uh, th there you go. Here's a little comparison shot. And then over here in the comments, there's no difference between the remaster and this deep fake. Look at that. Somebody deep faked Tom Holland into Peter Parker's face and it legitimately looks like the, the, the recasting that they made. And that's where a little bit of my conspiracy bone starts to tingle, is that this is, was ultimately a decision made by Sony to say, hey, we got to cash in on the MCU uh, moolah, 
we gotta go ahead and make him look like Peter Parker. Now, David, this is for the remaster, and even in the article itself, they say that his ver the the version on the PS4 will not be patched. This is right here, and that the original PS4 PS4 version will not be patched to incorporate the new actor. Cool. So that means that not only can I revisit my original copy of the game, but also when I play the DLC, which unfortunately I have not done so yet, I will still get the original Peter Parker that I know from 2018 that I played through with 40 hours to platinum the game. However, it's now it wasn't mentioned so far in the statement that Brian Ithar made, but I think on a separate blog post they mentioned something about how this is what they oh here we go what we feel is best for the future of the franchise and our upcoming goals for this beloved Marvel character in other words get used to it bitches because this is going to be Peter's look in Spider-Man 2 and the whole reasoning as to why he looks the way that he does is to again feed into the whole oh it's because of the ray tracing technology and the shaders and all this stuff we had to cast a different face to make sure that we take advantage of these features for like the bouncing and the geometrics and such. And I just have the most difficult time buying that. Because you can just, I, I really don't, I, I'm, I'm not exactly the biggest computer whiz. I don't know everything about graphic design or 3D modeling or video game development. I understand that. I put that out there in plain sight. But I just can't wrap my head about why it is that you need to retool and recast the face just so that you can add shaders. I don't know what was the problem of adding shaders and textures and ray tracing to this original face and instead bringing about this one. I can see the ray tracing and all and the ambient lighting really taking effect. I just don't know why I need this face. <laughs> I don't. I really, really don't. And what makes it even more of a surreal experience is that once I do jump into that DLC that I haven't played at and I am able to play as this original, it's just going to feel very bittersweet knowing that that will be my last time playing with the original Yuri Lowenthal Peter Parker, knowing very damn well that this is what's waiting for me in that sequel. And possibly even as a cameo appearance, should there be one in Miles Morales. And hey, if you want to catch me playing said DLC with a very somber look on my face, knowing what's waiting for me on the other side of that freaking tunnel, that New York tunnel, then feel free to check out the links below and catch me going live with different video games and topics over on Twitch.tv, Facebook Gaming, and my alternate YouTube channel, Dark Spider David Unlimited. Links are in the description below. Otherwise, guys... Please let me know in the comments, what do you guys think of this new version of Peter Parker? How do you feel about this recasting choice? Do you think it feel? Do you think it strikes different with the video game? Because I personally believe it does. Because a movie you're with for two, two and a half hours, maximum three should be some kind of epic, like with The Godfather Part Two, where they recast Vito Corleone at, with Robert De Niro instead of a younger looking uh, Marlon Brando. You're only there for a momentary piece of time. A video game, on the other hand, you're with for like dozens of hours, especially if you aim to platinum it like I did with the original game. It's a different form of investment, and I think it hits different. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure you like and share or don't like. I don't really care. But voice your expressions down below. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. Links are in the uh, description. And as always, guys, stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Oh, boy.